It's been over seven years since NASA launched a spacecraft intended to retrieve samples from an asteroid. A few weeks ago, the sample successfully landed in the Utah desert and was just partially opened by NASA scientists. Inside is the largest asteroid sample ever returned to Earth. Initial scientific results are promising, showing that Bennu is rich in both water and carbon-containing compounds. When NASA picked asteroid Bennu, they were hoping that it would contain these exact features. Interestingly, when the spacecraft first made contact, it actually grabbed a lot more rocks and dust than expected. Now, NASA is working to figure out exactly how much was extracted and the quality of the sample. Even though the capsule landed a few weeks ago, NASA is taking its time and doing everything in its power to ensure the samples are not contaminated. This way, they can be sure that whatever features and compounds shown are from the asteroid and not Earth. Here I'll go more in depth into the initial results, why they are so important, plans for the future, and more. The OSIRIS-REx mission launched in 2016, arrived at the asteroid in 2018, grabbed its sample in 2020, and just landed back on Earth a few weeks ago. Since then, the sample has been all over the country and very busy. First, soon after landing, they placed the 100-pound capsule into a metal cradle and wrapped it in multiple sheets of Teflon and then a tarp. Next, the team wrapped the crate in a harness and secured it to one end of a 100-foot cable hanging from a helicopter. Nessa then flew the capsule to a local clean room. Here, it was disassembled and packaged in parts for transport to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, its permanent home. By September 25th, the capsule had arrived at the Johnson Space Center. The sample arrived in Houston at 12.40 p.m. ET aboard a U.S. Air Force C-17 aircraft, which landed at Ellington Field. From there, it was transferred to NASA Johnson. With the cargo now in the planned clean room, NASA was ready to access the sample. The clean room includes custom glove boxes built to fit the sample canister containing the TAG-SAM or touch-and-go sample acquisition mechanism head inside. The head was on the end of a robotic arm that collected rocks and dust from asteroid Bennu's surface on October 20, 2020. Having practiced these procedures for months, scientists and technicians plan to proceed through the many steps for removing the sample from the sample acquisition mechanism. On the 26th, the lid was removed. A few days later, NASA realized that this process was going to take longer than expected, but for a good reason. In a statement, the agency said, The initial curation process for NASA's OSIRIS-REx sample of asteroid Bennu is moving slower than anticipated, but for the best reason, the sample runneth over. They went on to highlight that the abundance of material found when the science canister lid was removed earlier this week meant that the process of disassembling the sample acquisition mechanism head, which holds the bulk of the material from the asteroid, is off to a methodical start. In other words, the spacecraft grabs so much material that there is extra in places it's not necessarily meant to be. After the collection event on Bennu three years ago, scientists expected they could find some asteroid material in the canister outside the sample acquisition mechanism head, when they saw particles slowly escaping the head before it was stowed. However, the actual amount of dark particles coating the inside of the canister lid at the base that surrounds it is even more than they anticipated. The very best problem to have is that there is so much material. It's taking longer than we expected to collect it, said Deputy OSIRIS-REx Curation Lead at Johnson Space Center. There's a lot of abundant material outside the sample acquisition mechanism head that's interesting in its own right. It's really spectacular to have all that material there, he said. At that point, the agency was trying to remove the excess material, but also study it as it's just as valuable as the main sample. Some of the initial science included using the scanning electron microscope, or SEM, infrared measurements, and X-ray diffraction to gain a better understanding of the sample. The SEM in particular will offer a chemical and morphological analysis well, the infrared measurements should provide information on whether the sample contains hydrated minerals and organic-rich particles. The X-ray diffraction is sensitive to the different minerals in a sample and will give an inventory of the minerals and perhaps an indication of the proportions. This leads us to today as the agency gets closer to the primary asteroid sample. NASA reported that while teams continue to collect the bonus asteroid Bennu particles, they've also completed additional steps toward disassembly and the reveal of the bulk asteroid samples inside the head. The agency was quoted saying, Curation scientists removed 14 circular witness plates from the top of the TAG-SAM head on Monday and Tuesday. These plates were used to monitor the interior environmental conditions of the spacecraft at various points during the mission, and were carefully contained and stored away for contamination knowledge. After removing all 14 plates and collecting any remaining loose dust, the team removed the TAG-SAM head from its avionics deck platform and had the first opportunity to view the 24 surface contact pads on the bottom of the head and the asteroid sample beneath the collector head. Yesterday, NASA held a sample reveal broadcast where they went over a bunch of the initial discoveries and data gathered from these samples. The OSIRIS-REx sample is the biggest carbon-rich asteroid sample ever delivered to Earth and will help scientists investigate the origins of life on our own planet for generations to come, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. 
Almost everything we do at NASA seeks to answer questions about who we are and where we come from, Nelson added. NASA missions like OSIRIS-REx will improve our understanding of asteroids that could threaten Earth while giving us a glimpse into what lies beyond. The sample has made it back to Earth, but there is still so much more science to come, science like we've never seen before, he said. Looking at one image in particular, you can see that they have a metallic luster to them, said one NASA scientist. So when you shine light, they sparkle back and reflect that light, she said. In addition, a NASA report commented that, Initial studies of the 4.5 billion-year-old asteroid Bennu sample collected in space and brought to Earth by NASA shows evidence of high carbon content in water, which together could indicate the building blocks of life on Earth may be found in the rock. The goal of the OSIRIS-REx sample collection was 60 grams of asteroid material. Curation experts at NASA Johnson, working in the new clean rooms built especially for the mission, have spent 10 days so far carefully disassembling the sample return hardware to obtain a glimpse at the bulk sample within. Our labs were ready for whatever Bennu had in store for us, said the director. We've had scientists and engineers working side by side for years to develop specialized glove boxes and tools to keep the asteroid material pristine and to curate the samples so researchers now and decades from now can study this precious gift from the cosmos, they said. As we peer into the ancient secrets preserved within the dust and rocks of asteroid Bennu, we are unlocking a time capsule that offers us profound insights into the origins of the solar system, said the OSIRIS-REx principal investigator. The bounty of carbon-rich material and the abundant presence of water-bearing clay minerals are just the tip of the cosmic iceberg. These discoveries, made possible through years of dedicated collaboration and cutting-edge science, propel us on a journey to understand not only our celestial neighborhood, but also the potential for life's beginnings. With each revelation from Bennu, we draw closer to unraveling the mysteries of our cosmic heritage, they said. They finished by highlighting that for the next two years, the mission science team will continue characterizing the samples and conduct the analysis needed to meet the mission science goals. NASA will preserve at least 70% of the sample at Johnson for further research by scientists worldwide. As part of OSIRIS-REx's science program, a cohort of more than 200 scientists around the world will explore the regolith properties, including researchers from many U.S. institutions, NASA partners like JAXA, the CSA, and other scientists from around the world. Additional samples will also be loaned later this fall to Space Center Houston and the University of Arizona for public display, a process we can expect to hear more about in the next few months. NASA just revealed some of the initial discoveries from the OSIRIS-REx sample return mission. The sample shows signs of water and other compounds that NASA was hoping to see. Now they are preparing for even more science in the coming months. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.